Welcome to another video. I'm Dave and today we put points at the center. Now this is a very basic task. I want to take the primitives of the incoming geometry, delete the primitive and place a point at its center. Most of you will know at least one of these ways. I'm going to show you five ways to do that. But first, let's prepare an example. For that, I'm going to create a box as geometry container and inside it, I want to select the top primitive. Hit delete and a blast node is created using primitive number five as target. So when do we need this operation? Well, a very basic example is procedural modeling. First, you block out the basic shape of your model and maybe you want to replace a specific primitive with some more detailed geometry. And often you want to copy that geometry to a specific pivot point. And that pivot point would be the center of the primitive you are replacing. But for the first example to solve this task, I want to use an example with a few more primitives. So let's create our trusty test geometry picket. Deselect the shader, we only need the geometry for this. And for the first step, we create a fuse node. But not to combine any points, we want to create unique points for each primitive. For that option, simply switch to the unique tab of the fuse node. You can immediately see the difference by the way how the normals behave. Now each of these primitives have four points. What that allows us to do is to now call a primitive node, turn on do transformation and now decrease the scale. The primitive node has its pivot point in the center by default. So decreasing the scale moves the four corner points towards its center. If we continue to decrease the scale until we hit zero, it seems as if our geometry vanished. But if we visualize our points, we can see that our geometry indeed is still there. But the points of each individual primitive now share one location. But obviously this approach has one drawback. When the original picket had about 2800 points, now we have over 11,000 points. But that's easy to fix. All we need is to create another fuse node and this time we keep it on consolidate. But we have to enable keep unused points, since now none of these points are connected. Now we're back to 2800. Now let's look at our original example. If we take the box, and more specifically the blast node that selected primitive 5, the top of the box. To do the operation on that primitive, we need to now enable delete non selected. And if we look at the last fuse node, we are left with one point at the center. To get the whole picture, we could copy the blast node by alt dragging it, deactivate delete non selected, and create a merge node to combine both parts. That's what we wanted. And these three nodes were one way to do that. I call this the fuse shuffle. Simple but effective. A very similar but still different approach to this would be to create a for each loop. Remember how the normals behaved after creating unique points? It's the same what we get after the default primitive for each loop runs over all primitives. It as well created unique points. At this point, we could obviously again use the primitive node, but a different way to achieve the same effect would be to create a transform node. But the big difference here is that the transform node by default has its pivot point at the center of the geometry. So decreasing the scale would just make the head smaller as a whole. The key here is to change the pivot manually. And since we run through a primitive for each, there's an easy way to find the center of it. You can use the expression $CE and then the matching axis. So in the X component, we write $CEX, CEY for the Y axis and finally CEZ. When we now decrease our scale, we get the same result as with the primitive node. I strongly recommend to create a preset of this configuration. It might become quite handy. I already did that and called it centroid. By choosing it, the pivot expressions are already filled in and I can immediately decrease the scale until it's zero. And since we now have again over 11,000 points, we create a new fuse node, but keep unused points. This approach I simply call pivot points. Now, if you know me, I like to use VEX to solve my problems in Houdini, because most of the time there's a quick and clever way to solve it. But in programming, there is something we call brute force algorithm. That's basically the approach you take if you want to put your head through a wall of code. So this is definitely not a recommended way to do it, but it might still be interesting to see how you can manipulate vectors. 
So let's open the editor of this wrangle and do it. Again, this wrangle is also set to primitive because that means I can grab all the points on that primitive with the function primPoints and save it in an array called PTS. Then I initialize a vector called center and start a for each loop going through the points on each primitive. At each point, I add the value of the position on my center vector. After I saved all positions in the center variable, I can remove the primitive and have the parameter after the prim number on one, it will also delete the points of the primitive. When I hit apply on this, obviously my geometry vanishes. I deleted all primitives, including the points. But I have everything I need to create a new point. For that, I divide the center vector by the amount of points it has. In this case, four. And then I simply add a point at that position. And as you can see, I have the same result as before. But this approach has a catch, and that was divide by the amount of points the primitive has. If we would use a remesh node and thereby create triangles, now each primitive has three points. But the current coding divides by four. And as you can see, now we get a different result. We again decreased the size of the overall head. So to make sure that we always use the right amount for this operation, we use the array function len to get the size of this array. And now the vector is always divided by the right amount. Now the points match. And even if we deactivate the remesh node, the points still are at the right place. So this was the brute force method. It works, but obviously needed a bit too much code to be a relevant option. So for the lazy coders between you, here is a much more simpler way. Create a wrangle and again set it to primitive. If we now create a point with add point, we directly use the average of all positions, the center of the primitive. Even though we are on primitive and the position data is saved on points, we can still use add p in this case. Just a pointer if you weren't aware of this. And of course, to get the same result as before, we want to remove the existing primitives, including their points. And again, we reached our target. Interesting enough that this works because by accident, I typed remove point instead of remove prim. But this still works because I again offered the one as second parameter. In the remove point function, that means delete the point and its primitives. So same result, even though it's not the right function I wanted. And that was the lazy approach. For the final approach, I again use a wrangle, but this time it's called the backdoor. The key difference this time is that the data is not connected to the first input, but to the second one. Since there are now no points to activate this wrangle, we need to set it to detail. Now we can create a new point, but as position, we use the function get bbox center and use the second input. This directly creates one point, but this point is at the center of the overall geometry, because currently that's what we provide to the second input. To make this approach viable, we again need a primitive for each loop. By connecting the loop to the backdoor wrangle, we use the bounding box of each primitive to get its center. Now we get the right result. And there you have it. Five ways to solve a task in different ways, but with the same result. And of course, all versions work with our previous example, the box. We can simply connect any of them and it just works. Now in between, I'm working on a few assets. And one in particular is meant to gather all the tools that manipulate geometry. Replacing primitives with points was one of them. I called that the poly shifter and it was meant to be part of the rail system course. But I recently decided to keep those assets independent from it. The asset is far from finished, but this first and initial version will be available for my second Patreon tier. I hope you found this useful and I'm back next time. Sister